Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here once more with a update that I do uh, once a month if I have time for rail car loadings and uh, lumber production and sawmill capacity utilization rates. The uh, capacity data we get from the Western Wood Products Association, they are based in Portland, Oregon. They're very excellent. They have a newsletter called Lumber Track, which comes out once a month and lets you know what's happening in Canada, US with production and um, capacity. So full year 2021 data is now out and I'm gonna give you uh, an idea of what's happening, show you some graphs and the rail car loadings also very interesting. It's um, the AAR, uh, Association, of, Association of American Railroads. Uh, when they do their data, it says forest products. So you don't really see specifically lumber. However, a very good orga organization called Yardeni, they do a graph uh, similar to my lumber prices and housing starts. They do a graph of lumber products and housing starts. So between all of these videos and uh, things that I put on the website, gives you a nice overview of what's going on in the forest products market, in the housing market, all tied together with the lumber prices and market data that Madison's does every Friday since 1952. We have a dashboard that subscribers log into and they can see the 500 individual lumber and panel commodity prices as well as the market commentary explaining what's going on and uh, driving those price changes. Um, sawmill order files, log supply, lumber inventory, transportation, big problem. Uh, so let's dive in right now and look at the graphs for the rail car loadings and for the lumber production and capacity. And then I'll come back with a little bit more of an explanation. So here we have U.S. Uh, forest products on the railway latest data. The, that includes uh, pulp and paper, as well as potentially some log, not just manufactured wood products. The orange line there on the far left uh, is this year. You kind of can't see it. It's tracking quite closely to the red line of last year, except for that huge dip, which happened during March, uh, February last year, when the bad weather and the storms stopped uh, transportation for a little while. The blue line, uh, 2020, you can see that big dip uh, uh, before the middle of the year. That was the changes to society and restrictions from the COVID. So pretty good recovery, uh, all things taken into consideration. And we're hoping that the availability of rail cars improves for this year. So this is Canada, looks pretty terrible. The red line last year, a couple of big dips in the middle of the summer, I would suspect that that would also be weather events this time. Wildfires, Canada was quite uh, affected by that. Uh, very, very severe wildfires in the north of Ontario and also throughout British Columbia, similar to what happened in the Pacific Northwest of the US. The very end of last year, that red line absolutely plummeted. By far and large, that is British Columbia and the, the storms that we had here, the uh, epic rainfall damaging the highways and the rail lines. The beginning of this year, the orange line, you can see the impact is still there uh, in January and then some up and downs. Really inconsistent rail car supply for the sawmills. It's causing quite a problem still now. So this is that graph from Yardeni that I was talking about. I really like this one because it puts Housing starts against uh, rail car loadings. This will be in the US. And you can see that blue line of the housing starts ticking up and up sort of since uh, early 2020. And the red line of the lumber and wood is just really flat. Like previous to that, the two lines were really quite similar uh, for 10 or 15 years. And now we have this disparity which accounts for the problems that we're talking about uh, for a lot of last year and definitely so far this year of the difficulty for the sawmills and the customers to make sure they find a good price that the wood can be you know, bought and sold at because the deliveries are just terrible and how can you plan? 
And here is the great graph that comes out of the Western Wood Products Association monthly lumber track publication, full year 2021. The green line is the U.S. and the red line is Canada. Looks pretty good compared to the past couple of years. Uh, very similar trend lines for both countries except for just at the end of last year when British Columbia was hit with all those terrible storms and the sawmills were not able to uh, ship out their wood and so they had to curtail and cut production. So U.S. full year 2021 relatively flat compared to 2020 at 37 billion board feet. Uh, also flat in December compared to the, the month before. And December 2021 in the U.S. compared to December 2020 was down 7%. Canada production in 2021 was up 3% to 23 billion board feet. Uh, British Columbia, full year 2021, up 4% from full year 2020. And so then the sawmill capacity utilization rates. Uh, this graph looks pretty terrible, especially for Canada. As I said before, those uh, new, very heavily invested large mills in British Columbia optimized to run at 90% and higher. So still struggling to recover from those lows of 2020 and 2021. And then again, really evident problem at the end of last year due to those storms. In the middle of the year there in August and July, that's pretty normal for there to be a drop as most of the building uh, companies have received and are indeed using the wood that they ordered for the year. So the U.S. for the full year 2021 down 2% to 84% uh, capacity utilization rate. Canada still super low at 79%, but that is up 1% from 2020. Okay, so right, like it's not that simple when uh, prices went so astronomically high a couple times in 2020 and also last year and people were screaming that, you know, it's gouging and collusion between the sawmills, it's impossible to do. Uh, you can see by the data that business is not that easy and the situation is not so straightforward. Uh, it's very complicated to run a sawmill going from the forest with the timber harvest and the logging and bringing the logs into the mill to the manufacturing and then getting the lumber out to the customers in construction and building. Um, so big shocks in 2020 and last year, uh, some of them for different reasons, uh, very unknown how that's going to go this year, but it is a fact that people need the information. Data, you know, the numbers don't lie. It tells you what's going on and maybe might give you an idea of what's going to happen. So, like I said, go to my website, madisonsreport.com. The link is in the caption. Uh, have a look around. Go at the menu along the top there to subscribe. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, and certainly leave your comments. People ask me great questions or bring up uh, awesome tips of what's happening in their area. You know, what we do is an overview, Canada, U.S., like the uh, full North America, but there is a lot of regionality. There's regionality in uh, timber harvest and uh, lumber manufacturing, and there's definitely regionality in construction. Uh, the entire continent is tied together by the railways and the highways. So all of this, uh, things that we find out uh, month after month, impacts all of us.